Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome. The following talk is a discussion regarding uh, management of complex intracranial aneurysms using clip reconstruction and bypass techniques. Dr. Lalagan Shekhar from the University of Washington in Seattle will be our discussant. Thank you for joining us. We're really looking forward to this talk uh, and your expert opinions. Please go ahead. All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, thank you for being here. Uh, today, we're going to speak about the treatment of complex, large, and giant aneurysms. In particular, we're going to focus on flip reconstruction and uh, bypasses. So there are uh, a number of uh, both endovascular and microsurgical options uh, for treating large and giant uh, aneurysms. Uh, and some of them are outlined in the slide, but I'm going to focus mainly on the microsurgical aspects. First of all, we have to define what's a complex aneurysm. Uh, of course, aneurysms uh, are complex sometimes because of their size, very large size or giant size. They may be complex because of the shape of the neck uh, or due to the fact that they have a lot of thrombus inside and or the origin of branches. Of course, previous treatment and recurrence also makes them quite complex. So there are um, different treatment options for ruptured and unruptured aneurysms. Now, in terms of uh, uh, stent placement, we don't like that for ruptured aneurysms because the patient needs to be on dual antiplated uh, therapy for about three months, and it becomes very difficult to manage the patient in the ICU in terms of uh, placing a shunt or even placing a central line, et cetera. So that's out. Uh, of course, for unruptured aneurysms, you can place stents, either flow diversion stents or uh, hyperosity stents. Uh, for certain uh, ruptured aneurysms, uh, balloon assisted coiling can be employed. And uh, in some patients, it can be a temporizing treatment. Uh, that is, you can use this treatment to, uh, to hold the patient uh, from having acute rebleed, and then uh, later on think about some other endovascular therapy. And then you move on to microsurgical uh, treatments, and you basically have two options, uh, namely clip reconstruction and uh, bypasses. Now, when we talk about unruptured aneurysms, obviously you have more options. Um, uh, the uh, bigger option uh, for some complex aneurysms is the placement of a stent with coils or a flow diversion stent, and, uh, namely the pipeline embolization device. Again, uh, clip reconstruction and bypasses are also options for unruptured aneurysms. Now, when you're talking about the treatment of unruptured aneurysms, you have to think about a natural history. Uh, the best study about natural history is the international study of unruptured intracranial aneurysms. Uh, there were some flaws in the study that uh, patients being followed were patients who were uh, rejected for treatment by other neurosurgeons, uh, and they were being followed for, the, for this reason. Nevertheless, it gave us a lot of valuable information. Uh, and what it did tell us was that uh, the rate of rupture depended on two things, the location uh, being the most critical areas, the internal carotid artery, PCOM area, and uh, the posterior circulation. Um, now, there's been a further study, uh, which has not yet been uh, fully published, which is a Japanese unruptured intracranial aneurysm study. And this study showed that uh, ACOM aneurysms also have a high propensity to rupture, and this is something that we already know. Uh, so when you are thinking about treatment of unruptured aneurysms, you have to consider the uh, aneurysm features, such as the size of the aneurysm and location, but also the patient's condition uh, has to be uh, considered. Such, what is the physiological age of the patient? Uh, what's the expected longevity, and what are the goals of treatment? And lastly, uh, you need to think about the experience and uh, expertise of the uh, treating center. Ideally, a center which is treating uh, complex aneurysms should have experience 